What is up? Daniel back again with the Virtual Robotics Studio. And this video is all about adding ballast to the robot. So we found out when we were doing the teleoperated mode and driving it around, if you went fast and stopped, the robot would really get close to tipping. And I think if I tried to drive hard, um, we would have been able to put it on its side. So that's not good. We want to fix that. And the way to fix that is because this robot is so light right now, we are going to add some heavy weights as low inside the robot as possible. Now, your robot's weight and my robot's weight might be a little bit different. So, in theory, you should have about 50 pounds of weight to add to the robot. We're gonna play it a little safe though. I've got a 20 pound weight here and a 25 pound weight here. So we're gonna add 45 pounds of weight plus some brackets and screws. So, I don't know, another pound or something from that. Um, these are, I guess they're called ruck weights. I don't know, I guess the idea is if you want to train to like hike with extra weight in your pack, you put these in instead. So anyway, we got them off Amazon. The link will be in the description if you want to get the exact same ones as us. If you know you have 50 pounds to spare, go ahead and get 225s. If you think you're a little bit closer on weight, do the 45 that we're doing, or you could even do 40 pounds. All right, also, we're going to try to do this using only leftover parts from the rest of the build. So the first parts that we're going to use are, there are these uh, Z-shaped cutoffs. We used one of them to attach our signal light over here, um, but we have three more, so I'm gonna get two of those. And then we have all of our uh, U-channel, or C-channel cutoffs that we did off the frame, so there should be four of those. And we're basically gonna use these to kind of hold the weights in place so they can't shift around on us. All right, and then, in order to support the weight and actually have a platform for it, when we cut our bumpers, we cut that 48-inch strip uh, down to length. These are the leftover pieces from, I think uh, we, cut the, we cut the long side of the bumper right and we had this much left over. Um, so you should have four of these if you made two sets of bumpers. I have three, although one of them I've already cut down a little more. Um, and we should, only need, uh, we should only need three of them, I think, to make this work. All right, and we've got those number 10, um, 32. These are the inch and a half long button head bolts. You might be able to get slightly shorter bolts and it might make your life a little bit easier. Um, I have the nuts for that. And then we've got some number 10 washers that we might need just when you go into wood, you kind of want to put a washer on top so the bolt doesn't start to dig in. And then to attach the rest of our stuff to the three quarter inch wood, I've got the rest of my uh, number eight by three quarter uh, wood screws. And the nice part about this is if the wood screws aren't strong enough, we can always switch it over to bolts later. All right, I think that's everything we need. I think we need these pieces to be at least 15 inches long. So we need two pieces that are at least 15 inches long. So you can check and make sure. Your should be about 19. That is what would have been left over. All right, so let's uh, move some of the heavy stuff out of the way and we'll come back and get started with the first step. But before we do, special thanks to Argosy and Everybot. Okay, the first step is inside of our chassis, we need to get these wood pieces running across. And right now, they are too long. Um, they get kind of out into the wheel area, and we can't kind of put them exactly where we want them to go. So our first step is going to be to cut two of these wood pieces down to exactly the width, kind of from here to here. They can be a little bit longer. You can see we have a little bit more room before the wheels hit. But we want to be pretty darn close to whatever this width is. And that looks like 14 and seven eighths. So we can be a little bit longer. We can be up to 15 and a quarter, I think, before the wheels touch. And that would leave us with a little bit of space. So 14 and seven eighths to 15. Let's check this side just to make sure it's the same. It is, that's good. Our chassis is relatively straight. All right, so let me get the square here. I'm gonna mark this to 14 and seven eighths. Just about 15 inches. And let's uh, mark that all the way across. I think it was the outside of my pencil line here. Yep, that's a little. There we go. So in this case, I want to leave my whole pencil line on, if possible, when I make the cut. All right. That is one. Let's mark the second one. Okay, of course, you can cut it on the bandsaw, you can cut it on a chop saw if you have it, you can use a circular saw. 
Uh, whatever you want to use. I'm going to use the bandsaw. Seems easy. All right, and then, of course, sand or file the edges. Let's see if these fit. Looks good. I'm just about. Oh, it's that's pretty much even with the uh, with the aluminum there. And then this one. Okay, this wire is going to become a problem. I'm gonna unplug it and leave it out of the way for now. And we'll probably have to reroute that wire later. But I think this one's gonna go up here. And we're just going to do a quick layout test. So we're going to bring all our stuff in and see what we can do. Oh, and I think I see another problem, but we'll deal with that in a second. All right. So we'll drop the weights on this way. And I think I'm going to end up stacking mine on top of each other. Now, there is an alternative to this, which I think is slightly better, but it's going to be more work. I think you could run this one across on the front and this one across on the back like this. It just barely fits in here. Probably I would slide this one back if that were the case. So they're kind of towards the middle. The problem is this completely covers the power switch. So the only way you could do this and have it work is if you wanted to move your power switch, you probably have to rewire some stuff and build something to mount the power switch out here where you can actually get to it. So instead, we're going to go with this across plan. Slide this one back out. So I think I'm lining this one up, so I'm going to skip two holes. And I'm going to try to use the third hole as the first hole that we attach it with. And that gives me enough room around this to do some more stuff. Probably slide this one back about as far as it can go. Okay, so one thing that we do know is I can get to the power switch, but it's a little questionable. So if I cut out about like something like this, maybe even a little bit farther in, then I think that power switch is going to be really easy to get to. So we'll look at maybe cutting out some of this area here when we take this back out. But before we do that, let's finish laying out what the plan is. So if we bolt these wood pieces to the frame on the sides, then we can take the whole thing out by undoing like eight bolts and lifting everything at once. It's going to, of course, be heavy because it's going to be almost 50 pounds, but that's OK. And then my thought is, we have all these brackets, so we might as well use them. And if we place all these brackets around our weights like this, the weights are generally going to be trapped in place. They can still move up, though. So if we took another piece of wood, and I guess we'll have to cut this. Oh, maybe I don't have to cut mine down to length. Maybe it's exactly the same length. We could take this one other piece of wood and bolt it across the top, or we'll wood screw it in across the top. And it's a little bit loose, so we're going to want to put something underneath just to make it so there's no room for these pieces to kind of hop up in the air. But it's pretty close. And that's the, that's the general plan. So the first step of this plan, though, is going to involve getting these wood pieces attached. And you can see, the way we're doing this, if these wood pieces are moved around even a lot from where they are, it's generally still going to work. So we have a lot of margin for error there. All right. so. Let's move these weights back out of here. And I guess um, let's go ahead and make this cut before we mount it to the, to the frame of the robot. Because once it's mounted to the frame of the robot, we're not going to take it out. So back to the bandsaw real quick. And I'm going to kind of cut out that area.
All right, let's see if that looks good. Oh yeah, now I can really easily reach in to turn it on and reach in to turn it off. Okay, so if you need to cut a little more, you can. There's still plenty of strength here. I'm not worried about that. Okay, then we need to attach these to our frame. So let's grab a couple clamps for that. And I guess let's start with the back one. Let's see if we can get this back one here attached first, the one by the battery. So one thing you'll notice is if you push this forward and you keep pushing it forward, it is actually climbing up on top of the motors and we don't want that. So you need to kind of go until you're close to the motors and then let's just give it a little bit more space. You can see in the front here, I've got, I would guess a quarter of an inch, but let's, let's go ahead and measure it to find out. That is 0.257. So yeah, basically, if you leave about a quarter of an inch, and you can measure that and mark it too. We can just set this to a quarter of an inch, 0.25. And anywhere close to that is fine. You can go ahead and scribe a line on both sides. And that is the line that we are going to line this piece of wood up with. And the only other thing we care about for this piece of wood is that it is not hitting the wheels or anything else. Looks like mine is sitting nice and flat, so I'm going to clamp it in right there. All right. in and good. You can double check that you see daylight here above the motors looking from that direction. Double check that your power switch looks good and then let's go ahead and get the other one. And the other one, what I'm going to look to do is if we look at the holes from the front here, we have one, two, three. I want to use the third hole so I'm going to try to get my wood to a position kind of like here halfway in between those two holes. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I'm just kind of eyeballing the uh, mark. All right, so we'll bring this up so it is kind of on my marks. And I'm just trying to make it flat on the edges. But you know what? It, if this is square or not square, it doesn't really matter. So we're not going to spend too much time on that. Now I'm going to get a clamp on this one as well. Check, didn't move too much. Nope, looks good. Let's get a clamp over here. All right. Now, here's the hard part. We have to drill this wood, but we need the holes to line up with the metal underneath. And I'm going to have a hard time doing that by drilling blindly. You could kind of look at the outside rail, because those holes do line up and kind of go in and try to drill that hole. Um, but there's a good chance it's going to miss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the robot and try to drill up from the bottom instead. And we'll see how successful we are with this. <clears throat> Let me set these down here. All right. So I think, again, if you're on a table, <clears throat> you should be able to just kind of flip this back and I want to slide it forward kind of until the frame is catching on the table like this. If you're on the floor, you don't want to rest it on the arm. So if you're on the floor, make sure you lift the arm up first, and then it'll rest on this. Then the arm can rest on the ground afterwards. All right. And we are going to now be trying to find. So our wood is on this outside area here. Let me see, we can probably rotate a little bit more. Okay, so I can see the wood right in here. 
Um, and I can see the holes that I want to drill through. So this is the backside, and the backside looks like it's going to reach. So I'm going to take my drill bit, and I'm going to keep it basically just, just as far out of my drill as I can. Now, if your drill bit is not long enough, they do sell drills that are specifically like uh, about that much longer, and those are going to work. Um, I don't have one of that length, but if I get into trouble, I do have a really long one. Um, that I can use to kind of get through those holes. But let's see how much we can get with the standard size drill bit here. And what we want to do is we want to just, I guess, I'm just looking to see which holes look good to use. And it looks like they all seem, you know, fine. So let's aim for the bottom hole here and let's see how far we can drill. Okay, that was not all the way through, but in theory, it should be marked for us. And then, bet you like this one I can go all the way through. That might be worth doing. Nope. Okay, so we're going to end up trying to get marks on at least two of these holes. So if you can get the top and the bottom, you're good. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side here. So the top hole I can just barely get started on. And then the bottom hole here. I can get pretty deep on. Okay. And then the top one is a real problem <laughs> because these belts are in the way. So if you go just above the belt, I can see the piece of wood here. The top hole, I think I can just barely get to to start it. And let's do the same thing on the other side, which again, and just barely get to the top hole. All right. If you have a longer drill bit, then obviously you drilled through and you're set. If you don't have a longer drill bit, what you would have to do now is you would have to take them out, unclamp them, take them out, and then um, drill those holes through. Try to drill as straight as you can. You could, you could line them up on the drill press probably even to do it. The other question is if I drag these belts out of the way, can I get to another not really. All right, so that one is going to be a problem for us in a bit. I am going to use my really long drill bit just to make sure that mine are going to go all the way through right now. And the top one. Again, and they make drill bits that are, you know, in between these two lengths, and that's the drill bit that I would suggest you try to find. All right, let's get the top hole. Then we're going to go ahead and tip it back down. OK, and don't forget, when you're tipping it, remember where the pinch points are. You always got to be careful with that. All right. And let's see. Oh, that one didn't go, that one didn't go through. That one. Oh, he's trying to push the top layer out of the way. It's there. All right, we're good. OK, so I might have to break away some of this wood or clean it up a little bit. And now, again, like I said, if you have to, it's OK to unclamp this, right? And I'll go ahead and unclamp this one, because remember, I did one more starter hole here. And I can see where the hole is started. So it would be very easy now for me to either with a hand drill, um, or taking it over to the drill press, which is probably even better, right, to trace that hole the rest of the way through. And now that one should line up as well. Okay. We're going to bolt these in. And if you have the right size bolts, you can use them. Um, we're going to see how long these 1.5 inch bolts are when we try to put them through. I think they're going to be a little bit too long, right, because this is 3 quarter. 
And the plate that the frame makes is about uh, one eighth of an inch. So these are probably going to stick through by, I don't know, probably one and a quarter is a better size than this, but we will see. All right. And because we put these holes through wood, there is a chance that they're going to be a little bit tight. So if you need to, um, you can run the drill through them again. A lot of times you can just sort of push them through. And if you have to, you can kind of hit them with a hammer and that will make them fall through as well. But mine seem to be going. I do want to, I think I do want to put washers here though. So let me undo this, which, you know, you can just bang on them to get them to go out. And let's get those washers. So the idea is just as we're tightening this in, if we have washers above those holes, it's going to spread the force out on the wood a little bit more and make it a little bit more durable for us. Okay, so I'll do a washer on here and then we will slide this one through. That's the one I never put in, so of course it's still tight. And line that up with the first hole. We'll do a washer on this one, push it through, and the hole should be somewhere around here. There it is. One more. And everything should more or less line up, even if the holes aren't drilled straight, right? Because we went through all of the material when it was together and clamped together, it should go back together. All right, so those four are all in. Let's try to get them tightened in place now. So this is going to be hard because we really have to reach inside kind of the frame of the robot to do this. Now on the back here, it's not quite as bad as the front is going to be because the belts are on the outside, so there is room more or less for my fingers to get down where these bolts are. So let me get that nut lined up on this one. See if we can get it started. There we go. Okay, and I'm probably going to go through and try to get all of them started first. And then we'll tighten them down. And if you have to, right, you can always bring this bolt up so it's uh, above, just above the metal. And then you can take and hold the wash or the nut with one finger against the metal and slide it over until it's in position. Okay, looks good. Actually, let's, let's uh, stick to the plan. I'm going to start the other side going. See if I can hold on to this underneath there. Okay, that one is on. Right, and this one is very hard for me in this position, but it's really easy if I can just slide the nut under. So I'm going to unscrew this one until it's above the metal surface. And then all I'm going to do is stick this against the ledge and slide it over until it's lined up. And you just kind of try to screw it in. If it goes, you're good. If it doesn't, back it up and try again. All right, and now we're just going to reach in here and tighten these. You want to watch as you tighten these in and make sure that they're not going to hit anything, right? Because the belt's nearby, that's going to be a problem. We got to be careful for that. And also, um, you know, make sure it's not hitting a wheel, make sure it's not hitting, just make sure it's not hitting anything, basically. All right. And because these are very long, we have to suffer a bit putting them in. And theoretically taking them back out when the time, if the time comes. Right? If you need to work on your electrical system or get in there, you'll have to take this piece out to get back to it. 
So it might be worth, again, it might be worth getting a bolt that is a little bit shorter. And you can see, got an extra, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch. Certainly over an extra quarter of an inch sticking out underneath here. So definitely could get a shorter one. But let's tighten all these in. And remember, it is wood, so you can smush the wood a little bit if you tighten it too much. So once it's tight, you can just stop. And we'll go ahead and do the back ones now. Let me just get that out of my way for a minute. Oh, well, we hit the other thing anyway. All right, fine. And you could, in theory, use the non-nylock nuts here, but if you do that, you've got to make sure they're tight before every single match. Because pretty much the worst thing that could happen is if these come loose, and the weights fall, and the weights fall on the electronics that are underneath them, that would be bad. All right, last one for this board, and then we got to do the front one. This one, though, is nice because I have room to. All right, washers and two more bolts. And these ones shouldn't be too bad because you can reach from the front of the wheel here. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to push it at least this far. So again, I think I can get this underneath this frame rail here and then reach over. This was maybe not the ideal robot signal light position. You got to kind of find a good angle to get the wrench in there. wrench was going to stay wedged in place for me. But it is not. Okay, fine. And you know what? I'm going to unscrew the robot signal light itself to get me a little more space since it's so easy to get in and out. All right, and if you decide that you are getting to this bolt a lot and the robot signal light is annoying there, of course, you just move it, attach it somewhere else. All right, looks like I'm having a hard time getting my wrench in, so I think I can always go this way along the belt. And it's kind of annoying to hold it there, but yep, that's going to work. All right, that one's in. 
Let's do the other one we can get to on the other side here. And we might as well just go straight to the alternate approach angle. Yep, I definitely recommend getting shorter bolts. <laughs> All right. Now, we have the problem of trying to get two more screws into this one. And we probably don't need those screws, but it's going to be a lot better to have them. So there is another piece that we have left over from the robot. And that was this one, another cutoff here. And I think what we can do is the holes should line up at various places. So I guess we'll do this side where it's not in the way. If I kind of drop a bolt through here and line it up there and drop a bolt through another one. I guess I want to be pretty far over. And line it up with another hole. That should be pretty close uh, to a spot where we, can, where we can drill. So if I hold that lined up, I'm also making sure this end is sort of lined up on the top of that screw. And you know, try to make everything sh look straight. And then we will not be able to go through this plate all the way. All right, so we're just gonna mark it. We're gonna try to mark it when it's in the right spot and then we'll go from there. So this is lined up. Those bolts look pretty straight. So I'm gonna reach in here and just try to get a Sharpie mark down. Okay, so that is where we will try drilling. You can also, while you're at it, if you use the square, you can come from the other hole here on the inside. Oh, that, yeah, see, that was not a hole. That was, this one has extra holes on it. So let's try one more time. Drop this back in, line it up. And what that means is, so this one is not a hole. That means this next one to it should be a hole. And for some reason, I can't get the Sharpie to mark that. So if you can, that's good. If not, um, what we can try to do is like look at where this outside hole would be. Okay, and I'll try to mark. If you put the edge of the square on the edge of the hole, so I think it's about here, which means it should be in this line though. So it should be about here. We can put this one this way too, to kind of give us that line. I think this dot is pretty close to where we need to be. It needs to be probably a little bit farther out. And we're just gonna try. If you find the hole, that's great. If you don't find the hole, we will deal with it. Okay, in this case, I need to be shorter on my drill. I don't know if I can get quite short enough. But we will try.
Okay, that did not work um, because I could not drill straight enough. We are going to have to take this out in order to drill those other two holes. So give me a second. I'm going to unbolt these, and we'll come back and mark and drill our new holes. All right, so now we can use this. If you put it inside kind of the frame like this and drop it down, it's going to start working. I think the thing we need to remember is it's every other hole will work. And this is not really like flush on the edge, so we are going to have to turn this until it looks like it's running sort of parallel here. And then you can just drill through that hole that's there. You can clamp it first, but usually when you're drilling through wood, it's OK. And so we have one on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And it doesn't matter which hole you start on, as long as you, let's see, we're going to skip. Let's check what we did on this one. So we're going to skip one, two, three, four, five. It's the sixth hole that we want to drill in. So if I put it in on this side, we're going to tip it so it's lined up nicely. One, two, three, four, five, drill in the sixth hole. All right, and let's see if they line up. First of all, and if they're a little bit off, we should be able to just kind of massage it a little bit with the drill. But let's see what we got here. So we are really close, a little bit off. So we're going to massage that one in. And then how does it look on this side? This side will go. And so that is fine. All right, it's a little tight. All right, so we're going to just kind of help both of these out a little bit. We're going to use washers on the top, so it's OK. Really, all I'm going to do is kind of go around and enlarge the hole a little bit. OK, and then same thing on this one. And you can kind of like rock the drill around a little bit. And you could just go grab the next size drill bit up. That would be fine, too. All right, let's try it one more time. No problem. And the other one. What, this was the one that went earlier? Yeah, OK, it's going to go. No problem. All right, now, we do have a problem, though. So when I said no problem, I didn't really mean no problem. These, if you put these in, as shown, with one washer, these bolts, again, being slightly too long, they get very, very, very close to rubbing on the belts. So I don't think that's OK. So if you're not going to get shorter bolts, if you're going to just make these ones work, let's put some more washers on. I'm going to put another. I don't know. Let's, let's do five total washers and see how that looks. That looks sort of comfortably clear of the belt on the bottom. So again, if you get shorter bolts, you're fine. It's, life's going to be easier all the way around. If you don't get shorter bolts, let's do five washers on these back ones here, just to make sure that they do not hit the belt underneath. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tighten all four of these bolts down. And then we'll move on to the next step. Yeah, they do make like a handled version of that Allen wrench too, which if you are going to be taking these in and out, which you probably will, 
That is probably worth picking up. Uh, it's a little bit faster than the way we did it. All right, let's drop our weights in here. <clears throat> probably would have been smart to do that one at a time, but here we are. We made it. OK. And it really doesn't matter where these end up. But best is in the middle of the robot. And um, I think they're slightly better if they're back as far as we can push them, because the back of the robot, like when the arm is out, right, we want more weight to the back. Um, and also, like, we're not quite at the center yet. But there will be some limit here, as we are going to basically find out from this one piece that we're going to put down. So I think that's the first piece we're going to put in. And then we'll build everything around this piece. And so we want the Z-shaped one. And we're going to go out on the bottom and then up and in on the top. I guess it, we could put this inside, but I think it's going to be harder to work with. It might be slightly better if you can get these pieces inside, but I'm going to do the outside. And I think what we can do is we can just measure We know this was 15 across, right? So if we just measure across here, yeah, just under 15, 14 and 7 eighths. So half of that would be just under 7 and a half. I think a 16th under 7 and a half. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark that 7 and a half minus a 16th. So this is sort of the center of everything for me. And I guess I do still want these clamps. We're going to take that Z piece. And by the way, if you haven't filed these pieces off uh, from the initial cut when we did the uh, frame of the robot, the chassis of the robot, you might want to do that before moving on. Mine are already filed down. So it looks like somewhere around here. And I'm just going to make this one. It doesn't matter if our boards are parallel or not, because we'll make this one flush kind of on the back here. And then when we do the other side, that one will adjust, we'll move to adjust. So let's get at least one clamp on here if we can. It's going to be really hard to drill if we do another one, because I can't put these clamps facing the other way. But with wood, we're probably all right. And then I'm back down to my, I think this is the, 5 64ths drill bit for us to do pilot holes with. Actually, let me switch. Eh, no, this one will be fine. It'll be fine. You probably will have to drill on a little bit of an angle. That's OK. Um, although, yeah, let me see if I have a longer 5 64ths drill bit. And because this is in the way, I'm not going to be able to drive straight. I'm going to make this be as long as I can. So I'll just kind of extend it out to the to the maximum spot here. Um, and you know what? We're going to be drilling this hole a little bit crooked, and that is kind of OK. All right, so we'll do the pilot hole. And then I'm going to be using these 8 by 3 quarter wood screws. And then we're going to try to drive those in. And for this one, OK, that is a little tight. Let me get an extension here. should hopefully give me enough height to be able to screw it in without hitting stuff. OK, looks good. And if this rotates a little bit or moves a little bit on us, that's OK. No big deal. Let's drop the clamp, especially the first one. The second one is the one that's going to matter more. All right, try to be in the middle. And of course, because we're on an angle, that probably is going to make it not stay exactly where we want it to be. We could mark the hole, take the whole bracket out, and then drill both holes. And we would be going straighter in that way, which we might do on the other side. OK. And you can see the top moves a little bit, but the bottom is very secure. Then we'll go ahead and push our weights into that. And then we're going to go to the front with our other Z piece.
and this one also try to be in the middle. We're going to push it all the way forward. And it looks like I'm going to have a hard time clamping this one. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it this way. If you mark the center of the holes, try to get as much in the center as you can. Then we should be able to drill, which again, because of this crossbar means I'm going to be a little crooked. Now we'll screw it in. Hold on. Does this side fit better? Okay. Our two, the two ends of the Z piece look like they're slightly different sizes. So if after you mark it, it looks way off, flip it around and try the other side. And that one lines up for me. All right, so the bottom one, we're in actually pretty good shape. The bottom one can't move forward or backwards at all. Now we have to deal with the side to side on the bottom one. And the top one is smaller than the bottom one in every direction. So this is one reason why if you have two 25 pound plates, this job is probably slightly easier for you. All right, so that is now, I just eyeballed center between my two plates here. And now on the outsides, we can just go ahead and drop these plates on. And we'll do that in kind of all four positions here. The question though is, if I put all those plates on, can I put this one in afterwards? And the answer is no. So let's make sure our second weight is already stacked in there. And actually, we wanted that other piece of wood that was going to run across the top. And if we put those other plates on now, can we get the piece of wood in? And the answer is also no. So we're going to do one side of these brackets, and then we're going to do our other wood piece here. All right. So that side seems fine. Doesn't really matter which side you choose. And for this, it doesn't really matter where you are either. Just make sure it is flat against. And this looks like another situation where I'm going to mark it and drill separately. Now, if you want, with these outside ones, you can probably make your life better by cutting them off, cutting this top flange off on the top. Um, then you don't have to worry about getting around that when we drill and screw in stuff. But it does give us the opportunity, if these things start getting weak, if we bolt something across the top, that'll make it a lot stronger. So we have that option if we don't have to cut that off. All right, so I've got my marks. I'm going to drill the holes. And the good news is, right now, all we're really doing is drilling into wood. So we don't have to worry too much about our electronics right now. There it is. And this one, yep, you're going to have to drive this one in a little bit of an angle. That's OK. Again, and I'm just holding it tight against the weight. All right, that bottom weight is getting pretty well secured. Let's do our last one over here. I guess I'm going to come towards the edge of the wood piece because I just want to make sure I get as much support on the weight as possible. Let's put our dots in here. That one is hard to get to. All right, well, we'll do the best we can. A 
line it up. And again, I'm going to make sure it's pressed in. Cool. All right, pretty good. Now we do know we have a problem with the small weight being smaller than the big weight. We don't really want this. I mean, it probably would be fine for it to rattle around this much. That's not very far. But you can see as this slides forward, we get some movement here that I don't like. And it's basically all based on this thing accelerating. And if we can stop it from accelerating, then we won't have those problems. So you probably could actually just bend these pieces in until they hit it. That is not a terrible idea. We can maybe put some other pieces of something in here, though, as shims um, to help out as well. And then we're going to do this piece of wood in here, right, where we want to hold that down. So if you haven't yet, again, this is the only piece of wood I have left, so I'm going to make it work. But what you should do is go ahead and measure the top of this section here. Looks like we want another piece that is, this one should be slightly longer. So maybe 15 inches, maybe 15 and an eighth inches is the, is the dimension I'm getting going across here. So if you have another one of your leftover bumper pieces, cut that one to 15 and an eighth. And yours will fit a little bit better than mine. But what you can see on mine is I do go far enough to get to these holes. So that is going to work just fine for me. OK. And then we want this to be down and pushing on the wood. And right now, it will not do that. There is a little bit of a gap there. And I think there's a few ways that we could try to solve this problem. One way is we could do more washers in there. But it's a little bit hard to stack up all the washers that we would want. Let's see. Because can we get a third one? If we can get a third one, that would actually be even better, right? And it should be a little tight to get them all in. So this is, dif this is difficult. This is one way that you could try to do it. If you did two, it would probably be OK. Um, but three, wow, is really forcing it down. So am I going to be able to get three in any of the other spots if I do this? Probably not. Probably not. Actually, two is now really tight on this side. All right, so I'm just going to try to shove in as many washers as I can to make this as tight as I can make it. But it looks like it's going to be two on this side. And we've got three on this side. Probably, uh, I'm worrying a little bit too much about this, because probably when we tighten it down, we might be able to get stuff to kind of bend forward. Looks like this is going to just be. Yeah, this one's going to just be two. I can't get the third one in there. All right, but the holes are almost lined up. Oh, whoa, but I want this wood shifted way over. OK, let's try that one more time. <laughs> huh, if I leave these washers in, they'll be trapped here forever. All right, let's go with, we'll go with two washers everywhere. So I'm going to line this up in the center. And on this side, I'm going to take two washers and get them underneath, lined up with the hole here. Two more washers on this one. And you should adjust your number of washers until like it's as many as you can fit. That's our goal. Right? We want it to be as tight as we can make it here. All right, and then let's go ahead and attach one side. So we can drill in. Remember, you don't want to drill into the steel, so if it gets hard, you should stop drilling. And I'll put the first screw in. Okay. And we'll see if it tightens up. That's a little bit looser than I would like, but, you know, 
it can't really bounce up at all. It's actually just fine. Let's get the second hole here going. Right, then the other side. I think it's gonna be harder to put the two washers in on the other side because my piece is a little bit warped. But if I push down on it, we should be able to get them in. I hope. Yo, push on it with something. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, and another one where we have to kind of figure out how to, how to drill this one. So this one's gonna be on an angle, that's okay. She pulls it in a little bit, so that's good. And then we've got one more where we want to slide two more washers in. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> Let's uh, loosen this one, because if I don't get the other washer started, I don't think I have a chance, since they were already tight before I pulled the pieces together. Okay, and if you can't get, you know what I mean? Like if we did two washers on the other one and you just can't get them to go on this one, it's okay, just do one washer. It will probably be tight enough. All right, I think we got that. Head back over here. And then we can go ahead and drive that one in and put this one back. Okay. So that top one, it's pretty tight in there now, actually. There is some movement forward and backwards, but because we're pinching down on it, it's not that bad. Although we're going to probably still slide something under there to help out. And what can we do? Um, One of the things that I like that adds some space, so tape is good, right? We could definitely do tape here. Um, and sometimes tape is a little bit thinner, but the Velcro is pretty good. The Velcro is kind of like thick tape. And I wonder how much space that'll add for us. Let's try some of this Velcro. Uh, and so what I want is basically pieces that are the size of that of our brackets. So something like that. Seems pretty good. You know what? Let's just actually, we'll actually attach it. We really only need to attach it on one side, but the adhesive is probably not going to do a lot to help us out. I'm going to go down right above the big weight and just stick that on there. And then if I slide this in, we will see how much that is going to help us. Although that wood on the top is holding it quite nicely. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I think then we can, we can get the rest on the other side. So I'm gonna do that on the other side too, on our other bracket that's there as well. Remember, if you have two of the same weight, you do not have to do this step because your weights will be exactly the same size. Here, they're just slightly different sizes and that is enough for us to have to try some things to make it work out. All right, and then we can do another one uh, for the front end or back. So going across here, okay. and let's see how it does if I get if I get it on just this side. And it doesn't really matter if you put it on the front or the back, but remember we want the weights shifted slightly farther back, so it's slightly better 
if I do it on this one. And if you can't get it to fit in here, you might have to cut it down so it is a little bit narrower because it looks like the gap here is just barely an inch or just under an inch. And front to back to me looked like they were closer in size than side to side, but let's see if one side is going to be good enough. Oh yeah, that is definitely good enough. All right, that is all the way in. And well, I guess there is still a gap on the back that I can just barely see. So I will put one on the back too. And this is probably overkill, but you know, this is a lot of weight sitting on top of the robot. And I really do not want it to break loose and shift around. So the less room it has to move, the less time it has to accelerate, the less damage it can do to our brackets. All right. Can we still put it in? OK, yeah, that's good. That is good. We'll slide that all the way in. It is basically touching now on both sides. And I can't even, like, I can barely slide it forward and backwards. So that's perfect. All right, then we've got our last two brackets here that are going to come from this side to hold it in place from this side. And those brackets, we're also going to want to put the um, Velcro on. And I'm going to do that now, because I think it's going to be easier than when it's in there, when we hope it's going to be pushing on it fairly tightly. So let's get a couple more of these cut. And if I drop those in, how does that look? Oh yeah. Might be just a hair narrow, but what I'll do is I'll bend this bracket in if I have to afterwards. I think it's really, really close. And what you want to do is make sure you're lined up at the right height. So I'm going to put this kind of on the weight. Essentially what I'm doing is if I set this on the bottom weight, then when I slide this in on the wood, I'll know it's the right height. So I'm going to kind of hold that so it is above the bottom weight. Slide this in so it's touching. And that is fine. And if it's a little higher or a little lower, not going to be a big deal. And we'll do this one, too. And on the front here, it definitely looks like it could use more. But that's OK. Let's go ahead and get these attached now. All right, uh, we'll do the marking thing. So make sure it's pushed all the way in. Before you do this step, make sure your weight, your bottom weight is pushed all the way over and your top weight is pushed all the way over. And then we're going to go in and push this in until it's nice and tight against it. And then go ahead and mark. Let's screw these two in. Okay, just the tiniest bit of side to side movement. And the good news too for us is that side to side is way less scary than front to back. Because if you get hit on the side of the robot, yeah, it'll move a little bit. But most of our problems are going to be driving the robot forward and slamming into something. And we are very secure front to back. All right, let's mark this other side up. And then we'll drill and attach it. And we should be, I think, all set. Right. And that one I had to drill kind of at a funny angle. So just again, do the best that you can. The wood screws kind of will find their way. All 
I'm just gonna make sure I'm pushing in here. Pushing in here. All right, now, can they move? No, not really at all. So I am very happy with this. And again, if you needed to make it stronger, you could take another section of this wood, you could run it across these, if you go across here and across here, or even one that goes across all of them, then these brackets will not be able to bend in and out like they are right now. So that's the thing to watch for. If it looks like they're starting to get bent out, then um, you know, tie them together by going across like that. Now, we have another good benefit of this is we have now attached the top of our frame together. So these two pieces here are actually adding uh, strength to our frame. They're acting as frame members, cross uh, beam frame members. And if you remember, I think all the way back when in the first video we made some churros that were supposed to fit down in here, those are going to be hard to put in and these do the job that those were going to do anyway, so we don't need them. So that's an added bonus for this. All right, I think those weights are in. All right, last step, which I almost forgot about. We took the robot signal light out to make it easier to do stuff down here. So I'm going to put that back in. And then we're going to see if the wire still works the way that we had it hooked up before. So if your wire can still kind of poke out and reach around and plug in, you're good. Mine kind of can't. So if you remember, I attached it to this other network cable here. And, or this Ethernet cable, if I just clip the one zip tie that was holding it, you can sort of tuck that back in, then it will reach, plugs in this way, okay? And then I think, you know, I just want to get one zip tie on to make sure it doesn't get stuck in the wheels or anything like that. So let's just bring it to, bring it somewhere like this, and then call it good. So they won't tell you this, but the robot signal light, if it is completely broken, not on your robot and not working, it will not affect your robot's ability to play a match. It's really just about diagnosing issues that happen with the robot. So what that means is if this wire gets stabbed by another robot mid-match, that's OK. We, we can still finish the match and keep playing. So some wires are absolutely mission critical. This is not one of them. But there we go. That is remounted. All right. So. I think that is it. We have successfully added our ballast, and you can really tell. I mean, I, can't, I can barely even get it to start tipping now. Compared to before, it would just tip right away. So this ballast, I think, is doing a lot of work for us. It's going to help us when we're driving around. You can drive a lot harder now and not be worried about tipping the robot. And so thanks to that, now that the ballast is in, I think we are ready to take this robot over to an actual field, do some practice driving, and test our auto modes. So done for this video. We'll see you in the next one. But before we go, special thanks to Argosy and everybody.